and welcome. My name is Mark Brown. I'm a principal program manager on the Azure Cosmos DB team at Microsoft. And today we're going to talk about Azure Cosmos DB, how to build lightning fast games with high availability and massive scale. So for the next 30 minutes, we'll cover the following. Uh, first, I'd like to spend a moment just sharing the kind of feedback I hear uh, from gaming developers uh, about their experiences using uh, databases in the cloud. Uh, I'll then briefly introduce Cosmos DB and explain a few concepts uh, that'll help those who are new to this type of database understand it better. Uh, for the bulk of this talk though, uh, I'm gonna talk about and explain how these characteristics for Cosmos DB uh, make using a database like Cosmos a good choice for gaming. Uh, I'll also highlight a few customers that are using it today, uh, today uh, and let you hear from one of them. Uh, and then finally, I'll share some architectural reference diagrams uh, and then leave you with some good next steps for you to uh, get started for free, uh, as well as uh, explore Cosmos DB uh, and learn more. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, with that, let's get started. So I'd like to start by sharing uh, some of the things I've heard from game developers uh, over the last few years. Um, many of them tell me the same things, and I've grouped these together uh, into a list of topics. Uh, first, in terms of performance, uh, I often hear game devs uh, say that uh, their database can sometimes struggle with keeping up uh, with the amount of data being written, uh, or they need their database to scale more predictably uh, and want the same response times, <clears throat> whether there's a gigabyte of data or hundreds of terabytes uh, of data in their database. Uh, I sometimes hear from developers that they often need to over-provision uh, database resources in anticipation of a launch uh, and that this obviously is, you know, it gets expensive uh, and they'd love it if uh, they could grow uh, their databases and their cost uh, as their users grow. Uh, on the flip side of that, uh, I also hear about times when they didn't provision enough uh, resources um, <clears throat> and then they have to wait to scale these resources up uh, to meet demand. Uh, and this often impacts users, of course, uh, and their experience with the game. Um, and of course, uh, nearly every game dev tells me uh, <laughs> that their database absolutely positively can never go down ever uh, because if it does, uh, their entire business is going to be down. Uh, and then uh, also, of course, security is a big concern uh, for every game developer uh, putting their database out there on the internet. Uh, and of course, lastly, uh, for a subset of game devs, uh, at least, they they like the idea of managed services, uh, but still want to maintain that level of control uh, as well. So those are kind of the issues I hear from developers, uh, game developers. Uh, so let's kind of go into each uh, one of those. Uh, I'd like to start with the performance aspects uh, and talk about how a database like Cosmos DB uh, can address developers' concerns uh, in the areas of performance. So before we get started, let's properly define what Cosmos DB is. Officially, Cosmos DB is Microsoft's fully managed NoSQL database on Azure. Well, what is NoSQL? More precisely when we say NoSQL, what we mean is that Cosmos is both non-relational and also uh, it's horizontally scalable. Now let's talk about the horizontal scale aspects uh, of Cosmos DB. Uh, unless your game is very, very small with just like a low amount of data, uh, uh, your, light, your data is likely going to be stored on a number of different physical servers uh, or partitions within something we call a container. Now in Cosmos, we abstract all this away, but under the hood, your data is moving in and out of Cosmos uh, across a cluster of servers uh, in the cloud. Uh, and this is better known as scale out. Uh, and it's one of the ways how we can achieve uh, extreme low latency, uh, regardless of whether your database is a megabyte or a petabyte in size. Uh, it also allows for unlimited storage. Uh, so as your data grows, we just simply add more and more servers to your cluster. Uh, Scaleout also provides unlimited throughput. Uh, as they, each server we add uh, increases the capacity to handle requests uh, to write and serve data. Okay, so Cosmos, uh, DB is also non-relational. Now, when working with relational databases, you have this ability to do things like define relational constraints uh, between your different entities you're storing. Uh, and this lets you do things like create foreign keys between entities or perform join operations uh, across these entity types. With a non-relational database like Cosmos, uh, you don't implement any of these relational constraints. And why is because Cosmos is horizontally scalable and your data is likely going to be spread across multiple servers. It could be tens or hundreds of servers. 
uh, depending on the storage or throughput requirements that you have. Now, I don't want to suggest that it's not technically impossible or technically possible to enforce relational constraints across a cluster of servers, uh, but doing so would have an enormous impact on the performance and availability of your database. Uh, Cosmos DB is designed uh, to provide predictable performance uh, and does not provide a way uh, to declare these relational constraints, uh, meaning there is no locks put on any of your data. Uh, this means that Cosmos DB is capable of handling uh, massive volumes of data ingestion. Okay, so let's move on to the next set of items, scalability, uh, over-provisioning, and scale-up time, uh, and show how Cosmos DB is uniquely suited to help with these. As I noted a few slides before, as you add uh, capacity to Cosmos DB, uh, we add additional servers. Uh, but you don't actually add physical servers with Cosmos. In Cosmos, you manage your throughput. Throughput in Cosmos is measured in request units per second, or RUs. Uh, in Cosmos, we have two throughput models. Uh, there's a provision throughput model and a serverless model. And in the provision throughput model, you have a choice of our standard throughput or auto scale. And let me explain both. Standard throughput uh, has many of the characteristics that a VM would have. Uh, when you when, with a VM, you pick the size, uh, and then all of its capacity and hourly costs is built to you, regardless of how much you use. Uh, unlike a VM, however, uh, you can very easily scale up and down using standard throughput. Uh, however, there is an upper limit to this. Uh, so if you need to drastically increase your throughput, uh, it will take time for the physical resources to be provisioned uh, behind it. Auto scale, on the other hand, it's different in that regard. When you use auto scale throughput, you set the maximum throughput uh, uh, for your database, and then we will scale that automatically up and down from that max value down to 10%, uh, and we'll only bill you for what your actual max throughput usage is for that hour. Uh, best of all, unlike auto scale for VMs or other compute, uh, auto scale in Cosmos is instantaneous. Uh, there's no delay or lag uh, at all. Uh, and then finally is uh, serverless. So serverless is our newest offering. Uh, and at the time of this recording here in early 2021, uh, is currently in preview uh, and is set to go GA later this year. Uh, and as the name implies, serverless means basically you only pay when you use it. Uh, and this is great for a number of different scenarios. It's great for doing dev tests on new games uh, and also great for scenarios where if you have like routines that are very bursty, uh, but don't run for uh, very long. Just so just run for a very short period of time. Okay, so let's move on to latency and availability. Cosmos DB is a NoSQL database, but it's also a distributed database uh, that can easily replicate data uh, and provide read-write endpoints to serve data in any Azure region around the world. So you might ask, well, why build a distributed application with a distributed database? Uh, and the reason is that it improves the availability for applications because they can survive local failures. Uh, and the second reason is for latency. Uh, packets can only travel so fast over the network. So the closer you can get uh, your data to users, the faster your games are going to be. So these are both good reasons uh, and are reasons game developers generally understand. Uh, however, there are some trade-offs that need to be understood when building distributed applications using a distributed database. And these trade-offs center around three concepts, consistency, latency, and availability. Each of these concepts is fundamentally tied to each other, and it's essential to understand the relationship between them uh, because you need to make choices to determine how your game is gonna behave in this type of system. Now, first, I wanted to find consistency. Uh, for many developers, consistency is the C in ACID uh, for a relational database in the context of a transaction. Uh, but for a distributed database, this isn't what we mean. Rather, in a distributed system, consistency means the uniformity of data between replicas separated by hundreds or even thousands of miles. Okay, with that definition, let's dive in. So as luck would have it, there is a theorem, a computer theorem that describes the relationship uh, between these three concepts, and it's called CAP theorem. And what it says is a distributed data store cannot simultaneously provide more than two out of the following three guarantees. Consistency, so every read receives the most recent write or an error. Uh, availability, so every request receives a non-error response, but without the guarantee that it's gonna contain the most recent write. And then partition tolerance, so the system continues to operate despite an arbitrary number of messages being dropped uh, or delayed uh, on the network between the nodes. 
So simply put, CAP says that if the network goes down between nodes in the system, you must choose between consistent data and an error or non-error response, but with potentially inconsistent data. So CAP theorem does a good job of describing uh, the choice users must make uh, when the network is cut, uh, but it doesn't fully describe how a distributed system and database behaves. Uh, there's actually another trade-off that needs to be made when a distributed system is working normally. And that trade-off is first described with the introduction of PACLC theorem. Uh, and that reads, uh, in the case of a network partition in a distributed computer system, one has to choose between availability and consistency. But uh, even when the system is running normally in the absence of partitions, uh, one still has to choose between latency and consistency. So what this says is that CAP is still valid uh, when there's a network partition, but uh, even if the network is running, you still have to choose between consistency and latency uh, for your application. And you may ask, well, why is that? Well, it's because when you optimize for consistency, your writes must replicate synchronously to every node for every replica before it could be committed globally. Uh, and this, uh, this need to write to every replica increases the latency uh, or makes you slower uh, in, your, in your database. Uh, when the replicas are separated by large distances, this increase in latency can actually be quite substantial. Now, if you optimize for latency, uh, then the chances are gonna be higher than that data read in another region uh, could possibly be out of date. So as you saw in the previous slide, consistency is impacted in both the scenarios. Uh, and in fact, it is consistency that you use to tune the behavior uh, for choosing availability and latency in your database. Now, most cloud native SQL databases provide two consistency models to choose from. You get strong and eventual. Uh, Cosmos has five consistency levels uh, that provide a higher level of choice uh, to better tune the behavior of your database. And let me go through them here. So first up is strong consistency. Now strong provides synchronous replication between the replicas in your database. Uh, this one will have the greatest impact on both the latency and the throughput uh, for your application. Uh, it also has a negative impact on availability because if any region becomes unavailable, uh, your game will become unavailable. Right, because the guarantee for a strong consistency is that your data is perfectly consistent for every replica or every node uh, in the database. Uh, bounded staleness provides asynchronous replication, uh, and as the name implies, consistency in your data is bounded uh, by either some amount of time uh, or some number of updates uh, made to the database. Uh, session, uh, next up, is a unique consistency model in that it's a client-centric, whereas the others here are data-centric. Uh, and session consistency provides read your own write guarantees uh, and also provides a higher level of availability and low latency. Uh, and it's for these reasons that session uh, is the default consistency model uh, in Cosmos. Next up is consistent prefix. Uh, this is a weaker level of consistency uh, and it basically provides guarantees that data will never be, never be read out of order uh, in which they were written. Uh, and then last up is eventual consistency uh, and here, there's no guarantees that your data is going to be in any particular order or the time in which it's replicated uh, uh, into your database across all of your different regions. Uh, but that trade-off there means you get the highest level of throughput uh, for writes to your database. And as you'll see with anything in distributed computing, uh, consistency models themselves are a series of trade-offs uh, with either higher or lower latency or higher or lower throughput. Designing a, excuse me, designing a distributed system for high availability uh, is only part of the task here. Uh, you must also develop a business continuity plan uh, should an event occur. Uh, and to do this, you need to understand the system's tolerance for data loss and downtime. Uh, and this is commonly referred to uh, as recovery point objective or RPO uh, and recovery time objective or RTO. Simply put, RPO is how long did you lose data and RTO is how long are you down for? Uh, and these are both bit, uh, driven by business and technical requirements uh, for your game. And it's critical you know these values uh, because they have a direct impact on what consistency model you choose. In our documentation, we published this table. Uh, and this illustrates the SLOs for the RPO and RTO for uh, Cosmos DB should a regional event occur. What's important to keep in mind here is that it's physically impossible to have a database that provides both the low latency of local writes with perfect consistency for replicas that are separated by hundreds or thousands of miles. 
However, you can get really close. Choice of consistency model, the number of regions, uh, whether you use single region write or multi-region write, uh, and even the location of the region replicas all paid a part uh, in the performance of your game uh, and should be explored and tested uh, to ensure you're optimized the way you want. So next up is security. Uh, there's multiple ways to secure your endpoints in Cosmos DB. Uh, you can use IP firewall or, or and or service endpoints. Uh, service endpoints restrict traffic to your Cosmos DB endpoint uh, to only those from a specific virtual network and subnet. Uh, and this effectively removes the public endpoint for your database from the internet uh, and only allows access via private IP address uh, within the subnet where your the compute for your game servers all reside. And finally, I want to talk about control. So Cosmos is a fully managed database in Azure. However, there are quite a few things that require thoughtful consideration uh, to ensure the best possible performance for your games. Probably the most important of these is the data model and the partition key strategy uh, for your game. Uh, data modeling for this type of database is very different uh, than it is for a relational database. Uh, you need to focus on your access patterns for your data to understand how data should be modeled within documents, stored in containers, uh, and partitioned to provide smooth scaling as your database grows. Throughput plays an, an important factor too, uh, but is made much easier with the introduction of our autoscale feature uh, that can take much of the guesswork out of knowing how much throughput you need to provision. The regions you replicate data in as well can play an important role. Uh, you want your data to be close to your users, uh, but you need to balance that with the cost and effort of running instances of your compute uh, in multiple regions. Uh, and finally, the consistency model. Uh, as I described earlier, uh, this can have a dramatic impact on the availability and performance uh, for your application or for your games. Uh, and understanding what's important uh, in how your game should behave uh, should a region lose availability uh, is going to take careful consideration. So next, I'd like to talk about a, a great new capability that I'm super excited about. Uh, in 2020, Microsoft announced Azure Synapse Link for Azure Cosmos DB. Uh, and this provides cloud-native hybrid transactional and analytical processing, or HTAP, capabilities that allow customers to do near real-time analytics over operational data in Azure Cosmos DB. All this with uh, no ETL and zero performance impact uh, on your operational gaming workloads. You can now generate near real-time analytics over your operational gameplay in Cosmos and at scale. So let me show you how this works. Uh, first, data you write to Cosmos DB is stored in our row store database, which of course is optimized for transactional reads and writes uh, and operational queries. Next, as data is written to Cosmos DB, uh, it's automatically written to a fully isolated column store optimized for analytical queries uh, over large volumes of data. All data is automatically synced from the transactional store to the analytical store uh, in near real time, just within minutes. Uh, and this auto sync capability uh, does not consume any uh, throughput or RUs uh, allocated for your operational workloads. So your games can continue performing <clears throat> at that same level of performance uh, as none of that compute is taken uh, to move data over into the analytical store. Now, with this data available in Synapse, you can query it using either the Spark or SQL runtimes. Uh, and this enables you to do all sorts of advanced things, such as build machine learning pipelines, do BI dashboards, or run you know, big data analytics uh, in near real time on your gameplay uh, in Azure. So I'd like to highlight some of our customers using Cosmos DB today. Minecraft Earth is a game played on uh, AR-capable iOS and Android devices, uh, and its users can share experiences uh, while being separated by large distances. Uh, for them, they use Cosmos DB because they can replicate gameplay data very quickly uh, to the, all the other regions they run in, uh, and this, uh, this helps reduce latency uh, during gameplay. This quote from one of their developers for why they chose Cosmos DB uh, is one we hear many times from other game studios. Uh, games that have users all over the world need a way to get their data close to their users. Uh, and with Cosmos DB's ability to have multiple regions accept writes, uh, both reads and writes are very fast for their users. So here's a simple graphic for how they were architected. Uh, they got Traffic Manager up front providing a DNS load balancer uh, to all their compute. Uh, and then their data is deployed in each region they run within. 
Uh, Minecraft Earth also takes advantage of multi-region writes within Cosmos, so the users get uh, both low latency reads as well as writes uh, wherever their data is stored. Uh, Next Games is a game studio that uses Cosmos DB uh, for its database for a unified gaming platform uh, they built that supports multiple titles simultaneously. Uh, their platform allows them to develop and ship new games more quickly, uh, and because it all runs on a common platform, uh, they're able to save money on cost uh, while providing smooth and instant scalability for their games, uh, and of course, getting very low latency. Uh, this quote by their CEO actually is quite telling, uh, and it reinforces what I've heard from other game developers say, uh, and that you never really quite know how popular a game is uh, going to be uh, when it first launches. Now, you never really want to cut yourself short by under-provisioning uh, resources, uh, but of course, over-provisioning can be hugely expensive and wasteful. Uh, and Cosmos is uniquely suited to the scenario, especially with our auto scale and allowing you to pay for just what you use uh, and scaling up as needed uh, to meet demand. Uh, and doing in, uh, scaling instantaneously uh, as well. So Next Games is also deployed into multiple regions, uh, and they also use Azure Traffic Manager uh, because they need that low latency rights uh, from multiple locations. Uh, they also leverage Cosmos DB's change feed capability, uh, which can be used to drive event-driven microservice architectures. Uh, in this example here, uh, change feed is used within Azure Functions uh, to send push notifications uh, to game players. Next, I want to highlight Wizards of the Coast. Uh, they are the maker of the online card game, Magic the Gathering. Uh, and they run a service fabric front end and use Cosmos DB to power all of their gameplay. Uh, and just like many other game studios, they're looking for the same things. They want low latency, uh, they want high availability, uh, and they want their data to be secure. But rather than me talk about them, uh, I'll let them speak for themselves about their experience using Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB is, well, it's our state store. We have a lot of cards. Uh, we have uh, about a half a terabyte of raw data in Cosmos. I, I know that's not super impressive, except that we haven't even launched yet, not really. Uh, but Magic the Gathering is played in almost every country on Earth. Uh, and in a course of a game, they need to know all of that data several, several times. Uh, and we read about 2,200 uh, polls from Cosmos DB every second from all over the world, and you wouldn't know it because the game is smooth as silk. Um, and lastly, and I think this is the most important, anybody who's put a database on the internet has been scared, and rightly so. The idea that your back-end data has to go out to where AOL lives and then come back in to talk to your mission-critical database is silly, Cosmos DB has us on a secured endpoint so that the private networks of our game services talk through back-end, intranet, Microsoft-only traffic to reach the service endpoint of Cosmos DB and back again. It just doesn't get out of open waters, which means that we can basically trust that Cosmos DB is going to be secure as a service and not have to hire five SQL devs just to patch the dumb thing. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so love it when they say it themselves. Moving on. So I'd like to close uh, with some architecture patterns and references uh, that can help you uh, explore Cosmos DB for your next game title. So Cosmos DB is used in many different architecture patterns that are built in the cloud today. Uh, and this is due to its unique nature as a distributed NoSQL database. Uh, that can provide extreme low latency and high availability, uh, and also because of great features like change feed uh, that allow developers to build event-driven applications and services. So I wanted to share some specific reference architectures that may be helpful to you uh, and think about how you can use Cosmos DB in your game. Uh, Cosmos DB is great for capturing real-time gameplay data. Uh, using change feed, developers can easily create leaderboards uh, that take the raw gameplay data and transform and aggregate that uh, into a materialized or into another container uh, as a materialized view of users and scores. Now, this materialized view pattern is a very common use case scenario, uh, and it's one that's quite easy to implement using Cosmos DB. Cosmos is a write-optimized database and can easily ingest large amounts of data. 
Uh, many developers use Cosmos as a means to capture real-time telemetry and then use ChangeFeed to aggregate the data for real-time dashboards uh, or to a trigger events elsewhere. Uh, ChangeFeed can also be used to copy the data uh, to blob storage to archive while TTing off the data uh, from Cosmos uh, to keep your database small. So that's it for this presentation. Uh, but before I go, I wanted to share some links to make your experience learning about Cosmos DB a great one. First, uh, there's multiple ways to try Cosmos DB for free. Uh, we recently blogged about this. So before you try Cosmos, uh, read up on how you can try it for free at akams uh, slash Cosmos DB dash free. Uh, next, we have a great YouTube channel with lots of great how-to videos. Uh, and some are full length presentations, uh, but many are just short, uh, just a few minutes in length and are really easy to watch. Uh, and also uh, can teach you a ton about Cosmos DB. Uh, they're all awesome though. So feel free to check those out uh, at youtube.com slash Azure Cosmos DB. Uh, and then finally, uh, we post lots of great tips and tricks uh, and how to's as well as the latest news and information uh, up on our blog. Uh, so feel free to check that out at devblogs.microsoft.com slash Cosmos DB. So that's it. Uh, I can take some questions and thank you all very much.